the global fiat is at the terminal stage, and and consequently, you're seeing managing right the the gold and, and silver price, and the action has become outright blatant. I would not be surprised of a a bit of an engineered event. Uh, for an equity correction or some geopolitics to rein in the excess liquidity. Well, the first quarter of 2021 is done, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, March was brutal to silver and gold. We took a big hit over the last few weeks, and stackers everywhere are asking why and what's coming over the next few weeks and months. Well. I'm here to shed some light on this, and I brought along an expert to help me out. John Lee is the chairman of Silver Elephant Mining. He knows silver really well, better than Yankee. And we're going to ask him some tough questions. You're not going to want to miss a single minute of our conversation. So hi, John. Welcome to Yankee Stacking. Hi. Great to have you on. Looking forward to uh, discussing some hot topics with you including your exciting mining company, Silver Elephant. Uh, but would you take a minute to introduce yourself to my viewers before we dive in? Uh, certainly. Uh, I'm the chairman of Silver Elephant Mining, and uh, I spent 20 years in the mining industry. And before that, I started my career in the Silicon Valley in the mid-90s. Uh, I graduated from Rice University with a bachelor's degrees in engineering and in, in economics. Um, my parents, um, a typical Asian background, always you know wanted the kid either become a doctor or engineer or an accountant. But I always had that niche on the economics. I was always intrigued mm -hmm. on the economy side of things. Um, so I graduated, and then I spent five years in Silicon Valley until the year two thousand. I was very lucky that the company I worked for was bought by Oracle Software. Oh yeah. So I was semi-retired <laughs> in my late twenties. Moved up to Vancouver with my girlfriend at the time, who's from there. Yeah. And then uh, so, somehow getting some and and somehow got um, got involved in the mining industry. And uh, since then, um, I follow all the silver newsletters. Uh, you know, <laughs> blink of an eye is twenty years later, and who <laughs> here we are. It happens fast, man. I know what you're talking about. You are on a uh, silver and gold stacking YouTube channel. All right. So the people watching this video love. Our precious metals yes all right and 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 we just love to stack it so let me let me just show you in honor of the name of your company i decided to pull out some somali uh republic coins this one's a uh 2016 i think this is the 15 yep 2015 and, yes uh there are the elephants right there are you actually a stacker I was a serial stacker uh, back in around 2008 to 2010, 2000, right before the financial crisis. Okay, good. And uh, but since I I started running the company, mining company uh, in 2010, so it's been 10 years. Yep. But recently, just gotten back to stacking because um, because the the social media and a lot of there's a great overlap between stackers and mining and our shareholders. Right. So right. given the name, company's name is Silver Elephant. Actually, uh, bought. Uh, couple of coins and these are kilo coins and if you can see um my goodness a kilo? And what happened is about around 20 i pay what 950 dollars a coin uh just okay. uh, back in december so yeah. i think they're still training that time i was very lucky at well, the time well you kind of you, you kind of put my little one ounces to shame all right you win <laughs> pal you win <laughs> this round <laughs> no that, that's really cool but uh let's talk about the silver elephant in the room right now okay john it was a brutal March when it came to gold and silver prices. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and let me, let me just say too, th this one hit Yankee really hard because I was able to get my millennial nephew into stacking both silver and gold for the first time in uh, February. Okay. And uh, I'm going to tell you, John, <laughs> He ain't happy with Uncle Yankee right about now, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 you know, I've seen this happen over and over. We're seeing some discouraged new investors in silver. Yes. Um, in fact, I think some of the millennials, um, you know, uh, Wall Street silver, notwithstanding, okay? They're ape strong. They're diamond hand people, right? But a lot of millennials are disillusioned right now with uh, silver and gold. My nephew thinks 
it's really frustrating to be stacking this. And, and, and I tell him, John, over and over and over again to be patient. That this stuff right. is a long-term play. But he just, he wants to make money now. Now. Yeah. And I bet there's a lot of people watching this video right now nodding their heads in agreement to what my nephew's feeling about silver and gold. So what would you say to these people? Yeah. <laughs> I've been, it's like I said, I started uh, silver. I started a commodity investment 20 years ago, and I am 47, so I'm Generation X. Yeah, me too. Uh, who's really, you know, when the doc, so I, what my thoughts are, you got to be passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, well, otherwise, it's, it's, a, it's a long grind. And I would say silver stacking is one of those um, hobby or passion mm -hmm. or addiction that actually has been profitable for me anyway. Oh, <laughs> so I think, I think that if you're in for investment, any investment for a quick buck, mm. maybe you're happy to be the right time in the right place, but you know, lightning doesn't strike twice too often and, and you're going to end up disappointed. So I also recommend my, for example, my mom, I've been talking her into trying to get her into gold and silver for <laughs> 20 years <laughs> it has never worked. Um, <laughs> And, and I think it has to be, it has to, has to come from within. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe the first, I would say maybe the first thing you do is uh, just get a coin. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking like huge, right? Just a coin. It's an ounce. It's, right. it's 30 bucks. Carry around, look at it. And then, uh, and then go from there. And some people just can never be converted and you can, you can, you know, it just, I think more and more are it's not meant to be. I think more millennials, like, again, I, I mentioned Wall Street Silver, and, and those people are just passionate as well. It seems yeah. like there is a growing interest. And you know what? I, I would say I don't think it's so specific to the demographics or gender or uh, culture or culture or, or, or race or upbringing. Hmm. Um, it, I think it's more to do people are being just open-minded, receptive to the ideas. I mean, for example... Um, the company Silver Elephant, we're a puppy listed company who have over 3,000 shareholders. And I look at my share registers, they're coming from all walks of life, right? Interesting. Yeah. You have men, you have women, and you have elderlies, and you have, you have like, hey, John, I love the story. I love silver. I'm, I'm going to buy three shares. And that's three shares is like a dollar fifty, you know. So, but, but that <laughs> that could be a lot for them. And I and I did right. tell my nephew, you know, this is one way to you know invest if you want. I mean, I look at it less of a, a traditional investment when you buy the physical stuff, but you can also get into mining companies that will give you a leverage play. And if you really want to, you know, have an opportunity potentially of making a quite a bit of a, a return on investment. Those are opportunities as well. But I'll tell you, when, when you see the silver and gold spot prices get slammed like we did, um, it is a little discouraging. And, and it's harder, to I think, to have some people feel like they want to dive in. Although I think that is the time to be getting in. You know, you, you, you want to use these as buying opportunities. But why is the uh, price of gold and silver dropping so much? Um, I do have, uh, I do, I, I authored hundreds of articles on silver and gold in the last 20 years. And I've been speaking on a number of conferences in Kitco and uh, mm -hmm. interviewed by Bloomberg and CNBC in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, things only happen, you can attribute to reasons in hindsight, but um, mm -hmm. the in the short term movement of gold and silver has a lot to do with the dollar index. I don't know yes. if, uh, if yes. your audience is familiar. Oh, yeah. That's a basket of index. Right. Uh, um British pound and euros and, and Japanese yen and uh, Canadian dollar and Aust Australian dollar. So mm -hmm. it's called the Dixie, the dollar index. And gold and silver tend to trade um, in the opposite direction, has an inverse, strong inverse relationship, at least in the short term. So what happened is um, in the uh, in um, you know in the last six months, the dollar index up. Uh, usually, the dollar peak at um, the height of a crisis, such as a 2009 financial crisis or, or the uh, COVID crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, because that's when people safe, look for shelter, at safe least haven. in the short they term, safe, safe haven. haven. Right, yep. And so, um, so the, dollar, the dollar index peaked at around uh, April or May, just, just around the time when, when the COVID hit and the, the equity had a huge correction in that time. 
So since then, the dollar is got is down more than fifteen percent, and that is a pretty big deal. It Went is. from one ten to to almost to to uh, touching down to eighty nine, mm-hmm. and eighty nine happened to be a very strong support level for the dollar. So the last time the dollar touched eighty eight was around seven six seven years ago. So that was a very strong support level. Typically, it's going to take a couple of tries before it goes down further. So naturally, and then and then if you look at for gold and silver, you know, silver had a a fairly massive run up almost double from 14 to 30 it did double mm-hmm. so i think the dollar is, is going to range bound between say 88 and 93 that's mm-hmm. probably as high as the dollar is going to go which mm-hmm. is what we are right now okay. and coin set coincidentally um silver is being oscillating between 24 and 30 mm-hmm. and the 200 day moving average and that typically is a very strong support level for silver is around 20 24 30. So, uh, you know, silver dipped briefly below 24 and now it's selling at 24.30. I know I'm getting a little bit technical, but I mean, well, that's, that's that well, is I the point of the game, right? Because the long term yeah. we know is going to go a lot higher. But if, 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 if investors are looking for mm-hmm. directions for the short term, then they have to resort to uh, technical trends. There's this fear of inflation that I think a lot of investors have. Um, it It's causing investors to think that the... Uh, Fed is going to stop buying bonds, that they're going to go through another taper. Remember back in, what was it, 2013? When, yes. When Ben Bernanke uh, at that time said, you know, maybe we're going to slow down our asset purchases. And the markets went berserk. I think that's what they're afraid of. Do you yes. think Do you think that the Fed is to be trusted when they say that they are not going to uh, taper their bond purchases. They're not going to raise rates. You raised a, a number of uh, very uh, succinct points, and not only 2013, but most recently, I think around 2017, um, the mm. 30-year and 10-year bond was was on a multi-decade. Uh, the yield was on a multi-decade breakout. Mm. And mysteriously, the yield then was pushed back <laughs> to, uh, right. to, be, to, be, uh, to be back into the fold. Mm-hmm. I mean, I hear your point, um, and the rising yield right now, 10-year, is at around 1.7. Mm-hmm. So it's a three, four-year high since right. that last uh, yield scare, 2017, 2018-ish. Um, it, I would say I agree with you to some extent. However, um, each administration has different flavor in telegraphing their moves and in the, in the sort of urgency in carrying out market um in, in in carrying on market uh operations open market operations and uh, you know Powell went out and said there's not going to be any uh raise of interest rates that's going to stay accommodative till at least 2023 right and they are they're okay with inflation ban above three <laughs> percent and uh, so i mean that gave a blank check to everybody and then the dollar became the, the de facto carry trade, like or like the Japanese yen. <laughs> it's it's risk free. <laughs> but however, the last thing the um, the the Fed mm. and the Treasury market wants is a rising yield, absolutely, and a rising commodity price because yes. Yes. that is inflationary. Mm-hmm. And uh, if the trend continues, um, I mean, there are going to be a, a, a you know, a, 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 you know, I'm not sure what the right analogy, hot potato or <laughs> a, a rock at an iron place. If you're facing a three percent ten year and a hundred dollar oil price, mm. I mean, that would be disaster. Mm-hmm. Would be. There's no that would be disaster. I think I wouldn't have. And, and that, I, you know, I, I tweet a lot. And if you look at John Lee, Silver Elephant, so I, I've been saying since. Um, uh, since early February, say, hey, watch out for the dollar, uh, watch out for silver. There may mm-hmm. be correction and range bound mm-hmm. between 24 and 28. I would not be surprised of a, a bit of an engineered event uh, mm-hmm. for an equity correction or some geopolitics. Yep. Uh, so to to rein in the equity access, to rein in the excess liquidity, uh, to gather some bid on the treasury right. and put to put a lid on the commodity prices and uh, put put the yield back in order. Right. So I would not be surprised at that. You you are far more uh, intelligent in this area than I am. All right. So I, you you know your stuff. Um, I just I just have a hard time believing that the bond market is is legit. When you own longer term U.S. Treasuries, okay, and and the Fed promises to print as much money as necessary to buy as much and as many bonds as they have to buy to keep rates from going up, 
Is it the last thing in the world you want to own is those bonds? At the pace they're buying the bonds now, they could reach $5 trillion by the end of the year. I think that's a $9 trillion balance sheet from, I think it was like $4 trillion before the pandemic or something around that. Yes. That is ridiculous. The government is going to pay you dollars in 10 years, <laughs> 20 years, 30 years, whatever. And in the meantime, they're going to pay you just this little tiny sliver of interest, not even keeping up with inflation. And all the while, they're destroying the value of the, of the dollar. If that doesn't scream a sham, I don't know what is. And I don't think they can get out of this trap, John. Do you? Well, they can't. Um, you brought some very good points. However, if you're a U.S. person, it is in your interest as a U.S. United States as a country to hyper to hyperinflate because U.S. Yeah. is a debtor, not a creditor. So the concern is really for the creditors out there, right? For the dollar holders, well, um, that, for the savers. I personally don't think they're going to be able to taper at all. You're correct. I, and I don't think they're going to be able to raise interest rates ever. You're correct. And I think what's going to happen is they're going to lose control of inflation. And I think that's one of the reasons why they don't care about inflation. <laughs> At least that's what they say, right? <laughs> well, they try to kick the can down the road because there's yeah. no solution. It's, and you just keep feeding more. There's a couple of examples. You have a patient. You just keep giving more morphine until, until the heart stops. <laughs> Another good example is it's like a machine, right? Mm. Like you put too much oil, motor oil into your engine, right? Eventually, <laughs> just too much lubricant. Same. The whole thing is going to stop. <laughs> you know what? Um, the, uh, I was just looking, reading this into this. The uh, U.S. deficit 2020 is about $4 trillion. I think for 2021, it's yep. probably on track to $8 trillion. The, the um, 40 I mean, 45% of the federal spending is financed by uh, quantitative easing. So, and these numbers are only going to balloon further with, with, with Biden's our stimulus are going three, $4 trillion right. every, every other quarter. The dollar, I agree with you, is at the terminal stage. Nobody's talking about ringing in the dollar. You remember back in the Bernanke days where it's like the fear of deflation, you know, it's just it's garbage talk, right? It's never any... And the strong dollar policy, and then the balance of budget in five years, and 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 norm normalizing interest rates, that's and awesome. none of that is that's all of that's out of the window. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And 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 also that if you pull it, and it's not just a dollar; it's a global fiat. And what I mean by that is, again, if you go to my Twitter, you can see you can pull down a sheet of. There are people that track low, uh, central banks' interest rates around the world. I mean, it used to be like when 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 U.S. is coming out of 2009 financial crisis, and there's a lot of yield um, trades. People following Aussie dollars as five percent. Like right. if you're in Taiwan, you can go to the bank, you see the table, right? Aussie dollar, the popular is Aussie dollars, New Zealand dollars, South Africans, Israelis, uh, Brazilian for the exotics. Well, I don't think anybody go Brazilian real, but they go to Israeli checks, mm -hmm. whatever. But now they're all zeros. 40% of the bonds are negative. So the global fiat is at the terminal stage. And, and consequently, you're seeing managing, right? The, the gold and, and silver price. And the action has become outright blatant. Um, and, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of evidence pointing that towards that. And like you said, there's the, the discuss. So I think in short, the discovery, the price discovery process is not only foregone for bonds. I mean, come on, who in the right mind would be lending at 1.5%? Doesn't make exactly. any sense. The discovery process is gone for the bonds, it's gone for the corporate yields right. because the Fed can, the Treasury can buy. Uh, bond, uh, uh, corporate bonds, and then and then the Fed then can then you know write a check to the U.S. Treasury. Mm -hmm. So that circumvents the um, the boundaries of which um, the Fed can 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 inter can intervene. So the Fed practically with the Treasury yield with the tr U.S. Treasury the plunge protection team, they are intervening with the equity market, the S and P, yep. the the spider, their the the the, um, the equity market, the commodity market, the the. All, all, all the markets. Um, we're at the terminal stage. Make no mistake about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that first part of my interview with John Lee. There is so much that he talked about that I just had to split it up into two parts. So you're not going to want to miss part two of my interview with the chairman of Silver Elephant Mining. And until then, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.